Bonjour, good morning, welcome to Michael's, the famous uh, French kitchen. Today we are going to prepare the braised short ribs with the beef short ribs. I don't know what accent I'm using right now, I kind of combinated into two or three or six accents in order to make this video, but I, today I will show you how to make my world famous braised beef short ribs. Just hold on to your horses. Okay, in extra virgin olive oil, in a medium hot pan, I'm sick of the accent, we're going back to normal. You've got your seasoned short ribs on all sides, a little salt, a little pepper melange, and you're going to brown those on all sides in the olive oil. Today I'm serving six, so I'm making quite a few. In addition to our brown beef, and I have to move the camera, I have already prepared my mirepoix with onions and carrots and garlic. I have uh, beef demi-glace ready to go in to uh, simmer for six hours. And I have pureed San Marizano tomatoes. Of course, we're going to be using fresh thyme, and if you can see that little jar behind the mirepoix, that is our Turkish bay leaves. No kitchen is complete without a Turkish bay leaf. Okay, so I'm still in the process of searing my short ribs. Like I said before, you want to be on medium, not high heat. You don't want to cook these all the way through. You want to brown them on all sides. That sears the edges of the meat so that the flavors are released slowly during the braising process. It's going to give you a much, much richer flavor. These are going to braise at 250 degrees for six hours. I always make sure that my oven is exactly 250 degrees. I can't tell you how many people I know that just set the dial at whatever the recipe says and set it and forget it. So the problem is if your oven isn't exactly calibrated to 250 degrees, it affects your cooking time, which is ultimately going to affect the outcome of your final product. So I keep an oven thermometer in the oven so that I know that's 250 degrees. Okay, I'm just braising up my last three short, uh, excuse me, I'm just browning up my last three short ribs. As you can see, I've got the rest of them here on my platter ready to go. The recipe that I have makes serving for four. I'm serving six tonight. I'm making, I'm doubling this recipe. I don't care. This is so delicious. You're going to want leftovers. Um, this all has to be transferred into an oven safe uh, braising pot. It's going to go in the oven, like I said, for six hours. Now, if you're only making the four, you, can, you don't have to do this separation of everything in a fry pan, a saute pan over to the platter. You can do it right in the pot. But because I don't have a pot that's not unwieldy, I'm going to do it separately and then add everything back into the main pot to go into the oven. I also want to apologize because I'm not wearing my chef's uniform today. It's at the cleaners. Can you believe it? So it's uh, pajamas at Shea Michael. Okay, I got my ribs brown. I'm going to keep my pan where it is because, as I said, I've got to transfer this to an oven safe pot. I'm going to add my mirepoix, my carrots, onions, and garlic into the same pan I just browned all of my short ribs in. We're going to saute that up a little bit until it gets a little bit softened. You don't want to lose any of these flavors. That's why we're going to do this. Normally you would do this in the pot that you're going to put that in the oven. You're not going to lose those flavors. So I've got to do it this way so that I can get the flavors from my browning back into the pan. I'm going to turn up my heat a little bit. I'm going to add just a little bit more extra virgin olive oil. Not a lot, just enough to keep the pan moving. Did 
just want to soften these up a little bit. You don't need to go crazy. Again, you don't want to lose all your flavor in the prep. You want to you want these flavors to be released during the braising process. I chop these up very fine. I use my Indy 500 uh, 3000 racing food processor. And yes, I just made that up. You saute these up about five minutes. Okay, the key to any cooking is if you don't turn your kitchen into a disaster while you're doing it, you're not doing it right. You don't need a gigantic kitchen to cook gourmet food. I don't care what those television shows tell you. All right, so we sauteed up these vegetables a little bit. We don't want to go overboard. We don't want to leave all the flavor in the pan. We want it to go into the sauce. No recipe is complete without three cups of red wine for the food. We're going to deglaze our pan or add it to our vegetables like that. Today I went with a nice, cheeky, but interesting, Chianti. Dry red wine. I don't have the team of people to clean up after me. I get to do that when this is all done. Okay, now we're going to transfer this into my bigger pan. As if I did that from the very beginning. I'm going to go right ahead, put all your short ribs into your pan. That's how you do it one at a time. This is how you do it all at a time. Okay. Yep. The walls of these pan are, is, so this pan is a little bit thinner. I turned my heat down so that you don't want to get burning. Let that heat up a little bit. In the meantime, I've got my mirepoix and my wine on the back burner, heating up a little bit. I mean, once you pour the wine in, cools things down, bring it back up to heat. When you cook wine, you cook out the alcohol. Your kids can't get drunk off of cooked wine. They can. So, get this rolling. And you're going to take this mixture that you just made, your mirepoix and your wine, that all goes right in with your beef. Kaboom. Turn off your burners. Let's give that a little bit of a stir. down to medium. You don't want this boiling. You just want it because it's, it's going to be low and slow. That's the key here. Now, I'm also going to add into this my pureed tomatoes. Food is only going to be as good as the product that you buy. Don't buy cheap food and expect incredible results. Okay? Buy good tomatoes. Buy a nice red wine. Don't buy cheap wine to cook with. Cheap wine tastes like cheap wine, your food's going to taste cheap. Add those tomatoes, mix that in. And bring your heat up a little bit. Get things warm before it goes in the oven. Now we're going to add our... We've got our wine, our stock. This is actually not a stock, it's a demi-gloss. So demi-gloss is a stock that's been reduced way down. This is eight cups of beef demi-gloss. Now I have to admit I cheated. I buy a very high quality demi-gloss concentrate and I use that. You can make your own demi-gloss, it takes probably a full working day. So in this case, this product is very good. And I add that right in. Eight cups of demi-gloss. The recipe calls for veal. This is beef. You can use either one. If you wanted to make this with venison short ribs, 
You can make venison from demi, uh, demi gloss. You can also use beef demi gloss in venison. Venison and beef are very close in flavor, less fat in venison. Remember that. Now we're going to add thyme. We're going to add some fresh thyme sprigs. I got to look back and see how many there were supposed to be. Two. I'm doubling this, so we're going to put in four. Four good size fresh thyme sprigs. Not a ton, that's probably more than four. And then we need two Turkish bay leaves. Uh, they don't have to be Turkish, that's just me being a food snob. One. This is all going to add flavor to your sauce after the fact. Stir that around a little bit. After this is cooked, you're going to take the short ribs out, you're going to strain this sauce, all these solids go away, they get thrown out, and you reduce your sauce and finish it for presentation. Then we're adding to this two tablespoons of Benoul's wine vinegar, and I added two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. In you go. And then a little bit of salt. I don't go crazy on salt when I'm cooking. Salt's on the table. If people want more salt, they can add it. That way, if you've got someone that doesn't want a lot of salt, they're not stuck with it. But you don't want no salt. Salt brings out your flavors. We're going to add this all together. Give it a bit of a stir. This is heating up nice. Now, you're not really going to cook this on the surface. This is just prepping this to go into the oven. Now. I've already pre, I'm just going to check over, make sure I got everything in here. Okay, everything's in the pot. Now, I'm going to shut this off. I'm going to cover this. Where did I put my cover? Boom. Preheated my oven 250 degrees, exactly. When you're cooking with entrees and whatnot, you've got a little leeway if your oven is a little bit off. Baking, this becomes extremely important. If a baking recipe says 350 degrees, you don't want 375. It's not going to turn out right. It's basically a formula. If you mess up any part of the formula, your end product is not going to be what you want. Get that oven calibrated or use an oven thermometer. I can't stress that enough. Okay. 250 degrees, I just checked it, we're good. This goes in the oven. For six hours. Woo! And your house is going to smell incredible. You're going to lower your rack all the way down. 250, six hours covered. Low and slow. That's the deal. Now, I'm not going to do the whole thing. Like I said, uh, burners are off. Yes. When this is done, meat comes out, set aside, strain everything, you reduce your sauce down, you serve that, you either plate it yourself or you serve it in a gravy boat. That works. There's also some sauteed vegetables that go with this that get added just before service. I'm not getting into that today. This is my first episode of Shea Michael. So enjoy and have a great weekend. It also helps to pause when you push